This video shows how to build a seven and a quarter inch diameter drill bit to attach to a four inch diameter PVC Schedule 40 drill stem. A rule for the reverse flow drill system indicates that the volume of the drill fluid in the borehole outside the drill stem must be greater than or equal to the volume of drill fluid inside the drill stem. The seven and a quarter inch bit satisfies this rule for a four inch PVC pipe. Standing next to the pipe nipple and the PVC spacer is a three eighths inch thick by inch and three eighths inch wide piece of bar stock that has been cut three and a half inches long. Attached to the bar stock is a magnetic welding jig. It's gray with a hole in the center and at a right angle to the bar stock. Adjacent to that is the four inch PVC spacer that's white and on top of the PVC spacer is a four inch inlet pipe that will be part of the drill stem and will become the bit. The uh, bar stock is adjacent to the four inch uh, inlet pipe and will be welded. Underneath the jig, the bar stock, the four inch pipe and four inch spacer is a template. The template has a circle inscribed the size of the discharge pipe where the uh, pipe will be aligned and an X through the center line uh, that marks the location where the uh, bar stock will be located and welded to the bit. A nipple of four inch diameter pipe is cut to be two and seven eighths inches long. The nipple is then centered on the template and the first wing of the bit is placed and welded such that it sticks below the bottom of the nipples unthreaded in for a length of two and an eighth inch. One should use a spacer under the nipple to maintain the correct tooth or wing exposure. All four blanks are then welded to the uh, four inch pipe and uh, everything is aligned. Next, the teeth are cut so that they're tapered. To complete the bit, a hole is drilled one inch from the bottom of the inlet pipe and threaded to fit a quarter inch pipe thread. Then a quarter inch 90 degree bend is inserted in the threaded hole. A person should next fabricate a short eighth inch reamer to help clear the interior of clay during the drilling process. See the photo. The size of the reamer is not critical, but it should intrude a short distance into the inlet of the drill stem. The reamer is attached with self-drilling screws so that it can be removed in gravel or other hard material. This completes the bit. Next, we fabricate the first section of drill stem. This section of drill stem and the second section that is 53 and a half inches long are designed to be used as a starter bit and then pulled from the excavation once the hole reaches a depth where standard five foot long extensions or 10 foot long extensions can be used. The intent of using this as a starter bit is to assist the removal of the drill from the excavation when drilling deeper holes. For shallow holes in the range of 20 or to 30 feet deep, you may wish to leave the starter drill in the excavation. For deeper bore holes, it is best to remove the starter drill stem after adding the second drill stem and replace the starter drill with 20 feet of solid drill stem. Note, do not glue any fittings on the drill stem until the full drill stem has been constructed. The first section starts with the fabrication of a solid drill stem to be modified later. That section will have two female couplings, one on each end. The length of the section, once glued together, will be 140.5 inches. Once that length drill stem is fabricated, not glued, then it should be assembled and the recently fabricated drill bit installed in the end that will be the lower end of the drill. Next, one must lay out the location of the outlet ports. Measurement of the ports will be from the bottom of the air inlet elbow 
do not measure from the bottom of the drill bit. This bit is designed to begin drilling in loose sand. For that reason, I anticipate the possibility exists that the depth from the top of the water in the mud pit to the bottom of the starter hole would be 20 and a quarter inches. Using the formula 20.25 multiplied by 1 then divided by 0.75 yields a location on the pipe at 27 inches. Therefore, one should mark the drill stem to have its first outlet port at 27 inches. Using the same formula yields the location of all further outlet ports by substitution of the answers progressively from one location to the next. Now, one may mark the blank drill stem that has been fabricated at the locations indicated by the formula. This way, the submersion of the drill when a port is open will always be 75%. 75% submersion will lift nearly every cutting that will be drilled and in need of discharge from the drill stem. Using a 75% submersion means that the minimum discharge velocity most of the time will greatly exceed 100 feet per minute, which is the industry standard for removal of cuttings from a bore. Once the location of the outlets are marked square with the center line of the pipe, a template is used to mark the outline of the discharge ports. If one is using rubber sleeves to cover the outlet ports, then the size of the outlet will be somewhat smaller than the height of the sleeve. If they are using hinged outlet doors, then a 4 inch square port is ideal. This video shows using a 3 and a quarter inch by 4 inch template to lay out the outlet ports. This drill will be fabricated to accept either door ports or hinges or sleeve port covers made from rubber sleeves attached with screw clamps. Once all the outlet ports are laid out, cutting of the ports can begin. The first cuts should be on the lines parallel to the center line of the pipe. Then the other cuts that are at right angles to the first cut are made. One can make the first cuts both horizontal and vertical with a cutoff blade mounted on a four and a half inch grinder. One may do the final cut with a hacksaw blade or a reciprocating saw to cut out the corners the cutoff saw will not reach. One should number each outlet port on the pipe before cutting such that one can match the cutout with the correct port when using the cutout to construct an outlet port door. One should now slide each rubber outlet cover onto the drill stem. Each port should be equipped with a screw clamp. Once each cover is in place, one should screw the clamps in place securely to prepare the drill for transportation. Once the covers are in place, the female threaded couplings can be glued in place. Next, one should place a plug in the end of the drill stem that is opposite from the drill bit. Next, one should build a short section of drill stem 53 inches long without outlet ports. Fabricate it with a male fitting on one end and a female fitting on the other. This will be used later in the drilling process. During the drilling process, one will first drill with the plugged drill stem full depth. Then the seventh port is uncovered and drilled down. The plug in the top of the stem can now be removed and replaced with a fabricated discharge elbow that directs the cuttings into the mud pit. Once that section is drilled all the way, the 53 inch stem is added and the elbow is attached to the top of that stem. When that section is drilled full depth, the whole section is removed from the borehole and 20 feet of drill stem with a bit and elbow is introduced into the borehole to continue the drilling process. For the remainder of the drilling of the boreholes, either a 5 foot or 10 foot section of drill stem as determined by the formula with a discharge elbow will be used to drill the remainder of the well.